Hey everybody, welcome back to the GM's Alcove, my battle vlog update, number six, I think. Uh, currently playing some Lock and Load, Heroes of the Motherland. Uh, having a good time. Been playing this for, what, three, four days now? Something like that. This is the Rattenkrieg scenario, which is the uh, scenario suggested for beginners, people new to the game, which I am. I've never played this game before. Played ASL, uh, Squad Leader, ASL, the Starter Kits. I've played uh, Conflict of Heroes, all that good stuff. But I've never played this system, my first go. And I just completed uh, this scenario. And it doesn't look like much happened, if you've been following along. Two reasons for that. One, uh, it's the end of the battle. Six turns, it's over. Uh, second reason, I'm a little bit indecisive, since I'm not familiar with the system. Uh, not, I really had no chance to try out the close assault rules, actually, which is unfortunate. I was looking forward to doing that. And finally, the third reason is because the Russians have been having terrible luck with the initiative. As I mentioned before, there's a special rule that applies to this scenario called chaos, where initiative is checked after every impulse as opposed to at the end at the start of every turn. Play then alternating between both sides. Not in this case. As soon as a stack or unit gets done with its impulse, initiative is rolled again. So it could be anybody's turn. And uh, starting in turn four, in fact, in turn four, turn five, and turn six, that little special rule really worked in the favor of the Germans. And all three turns, they had three initiatives in a row where they passed. And that is a bad thing to happen for the Russians because they're the attacker. They were trying to capture this building. The Germans, for the most part, have been sitting back waiting uh, using opportunity fire where it was possible and just hoping that the turns go by quick, which they did. And that's exactly what happened. I was kind of surprised that happened in turn five after it happened in turn four. I was surprised it happened in turn five. And okay, let's go to turn six. And sure enough, right in the beginning of turn six, it happened again. Germans got initiative three times in a row. In fact... That up there, the four and the one in the dice tray, that was the final die roll. That was the initiative. Germans rolled higher than the Russians. They have initiative. I probably could have. Well, I definitely could have, but I might, might have should have. Uh, just kept playing, ignored the die roll, just to try out the close assault rolls, and so on and so forth. But to be honest with you, I really enjoy this. It's definitely going to be played more times, but I'm kind of eager to move on to another game. I've been thinking a lot about, well, I'll show you that game in a second. But, you know, this is really fun. It's easy to learn. And I think I'll have no trouble picking this up again when I play another scenario. Uh, good stuff. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what the battlefield looks like. I'm close. And you can see the Russians, this stack right here, it hasn't really done much since the middle of the game. These guys maneuvered from up here because of a mistake I made tactically with this stack, which has an MG42 in it, and it fired on this hex. And as soon as I did that, uh, the survivors basically moved down here unhindered. They got a DP-28, and they got a leader in there who's a hero. Uh, earlier, a hero was spawned from previous fire somewhere. And they moved down to this position. There's two squads down here and a hero. And my plan was to basically put pressure on this, possibly take it out in close assault. I don't know how easy that would be. It's an MG42. And the fires, if you remember, finally went out from this hex and this hex. And the Russians were just starting to come across the street and move in. This unit was shaken. I forgot in turn five to attempt a rally with him. Uh, my bad. I did make several mistakes in this game, or this battle, and he remained. Uh, one rule that kicked into gear here is for the motherland, Russians can pick a stack and add one to all units that are rallying, uh, add one to their morale, which I chose this stack because this stack was, was hit hard by the MG42 in this location. As you can see, there's a squad in there right there. With a 716 liter. 
guiding them. It's quite effective. And uh, for the most part, this stack did in fact rally. Uh, I think the only one who didn't was that leader for the Russian guards here. Petrov himself, he failed to rally even with that, but everyone else did. So yeah. And in my rush to make use of the sniper, I made a mistake and I placed him in this hex, which I can do, but I didn't see the rule that says that when I do that, if this hex is shot at, the special rules for the sniper, he doubles his terrain modifier normally, unless he's stacked with other multi-man counters, which he is. That I didn't read. Basically, what it is is when you place this sniper, see, in this building, he doubles the terrain mo uh, modifier of the building if it's positive. Uh, this has a positive modifier, so it will be doubled. And I didn't do that because I put him in with these guys. I didn't read that part of the rule, unfortunately. So he did actually end up shaking, but he rallied because of the heroes of the motherland, uh, or for the motherland special rule. So that was fun. Uh, this guy was shaken, I believe, or was it this German? One of them was. They rallied. Down here I've got a squad and a hero, which was wounded. That's what he gets for uh, some close-range fire from these guards units. He ended up being, sh uh, not shaken, but wounded. And I guess heroes can't be shaken. I just noticed that. Because when you flip him, it's not a shaken on the other side. It's a wounded marker. So I guess heroes are never shaken. I'll have to look at that. But anyway, he's wounded. And this unit was also shaken. And that was all due to this close range fire to guards units. They're 224s. Two, two uh, they have extended range fire and they have assault fire capability. None of which came into play in this fighting right here, this shooting. I probably should have close assaulted here. Uh, well, that was what I was planning on doing in turn six, the final turn of the game. Not that it would do much. I mean, maybe I'd get in here and take them out or not. really wouldn't matter. These guys are in trenches, by the way. Uh, because the objective is to capture that green building down here, the two-hex building. And guess what? It's just too far away at the moment. And, you know... What can I say? It's just bad luck for the Russians. They could not get initiative. And such is that rule. You know, this is representing a very chaotic uh, atmosphere right here and for both sides. Uh, they just could not get things going. And the Germans were happy to just sit back and use opportunity fire where they needed to. And that was it. And, you know, I, the Russians never got off the mark. I probably should have used my sniper and the off-board artillery earlier, like in turn two. Because no matter what I do with that off-board artillery, it's going to be a close-range effect because everything is so close on this map. If I was to play it again, I would have done that, I think. But regardless, the point was to have some fun and try out the system. It was a success. I really had a good time. And... Yeah. So what do you think, folks? This guy was a spawned hero during previous shooting. Never came into play. Um, yeah. I guess that's it. It's just that I just could not get to this building, mainly because of the chaos rule. Now that I'm looking at it. But I was putting pressure on the German wings. That was one of my goals. And I intended to attack here, but the more I saw the Germans building up with this MG42, kind of took pause, and I was a little bit hesitant to push off there. I wanted to see what would happen on these wings if I got some success. How far could I get? Then I can time my frontal attack better. Uh, yeah, but it was not to be. So, folks, that's the game as far as that's concerned. I had a really good time. Definitely going to play it again. I can't give a review on the game just yet. I've only just played this and a little bit from a previous uh, fight that I did. But uh, I do like it. There's the layout of the scenarios. You get the map layout, victory conditions, playable area, scenario length, special rules. 
and the orders of battle of course what they look like and here's one of the scenarios called keeping the door open this uh, Heroes of the Motherland also includes a mini campaign in the back here which has some additional scenarios that are linked that's got its own little reference card and stuff the track for that so we'll see maybe I'll get into that uh, yeah there's the casualties by the way up here we got one German squad and one Russian squad taken out of action uh, basically they weren't destroyed but they were reduced uh, to half squads in size from shooting casualties that's what they're from so they're not really casualties because elements of the troops are still on the board but they are casualties in this case so yeah there it is folks that's what's going on so the big question is what's next go on the table uh, I don't like to play games like this for instance or any game uh, just one scenario after the other just boom 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 I don't like to do that because it kind of wears the game out it's like having uh, too much of something that's good so I tend to out of habit I tend to like okay we'll play one scenario and we'll move on to a different game and I've already been thinking about another game that I want to play and I love all my games that I have on my shelf and one that I've been itching to play for some time uh, well there's two actually one is probably my favorite game of all time and that's great battles of the American Civil War absolutely love that game love the mechanics of it love its depth the maps the counters really good stuff uh, I just recently got done reading the rules for no other purpose except just to read them again I think for the third or fourth time since I got it and but I think the next game I'm gonna play because I've been itching to play is another favorite of mine SPQR yeah I just got that I think early last year uh, as soon as it came off the p500 it's a reprint uh, from GMT and I've been waiting a long time to get it and finally came out I think it was early last year finally got it and it's all punched all good to go I played a little bit of it earlier um, well, not earlier I was gonna say earlier this year but the year just started I I think I played it late last year I played a uh, one of the scenarios the first one from the what well, yeah, god i don't even remember what scenario it was it was the one with the ambush can't even think of the name of it sam knights and romans going at it played that didn't make a video on it posted it on youtube that sort of thing with lots of pictures and descriptions but i didn't actually make a video uh and i played a small skirmish action which i think i did record in this vlog my battle vlog i think it's the first second and third episodes uh, so I did do that and it was good fun and I'm thinking that that's the game I want to get on the table again and pick up where I left off a few months ago uh, with the next scenario from the book I was playing from it's another action between Sam Knights and uh, the Romans I don't remember the name of the battle but it was a pretty straight-up fight both armies deployed and uh, multiple lines which was typical with Sam Knights and Romans and looks pretty good it's a straightforward simple battle so I might put that on the table and get to it so what do you think folks what do you think about lock and load it was definitely a good time flip that over the top number there that's the leadership rating that's its shaken side as you can see it has no range or firepower or movement capability well snipers can't move anyway I got done with a painting session today should be doing another one tomorrow that'll be fun but uh, yeah I really like this game it's it's got a lot of depth to it uh, from the get-go unlike the starter kits ASL starter kits if you're sticking with just one uh, you're kind of limited in its depth obviously but this game puts it all there in front of you all the mechanics are simple and it's fun fun mechanics so I guess I'm gonna be putting this one away I don't know when I'm gonna get back to it I might come back to it after some SPQR because uh, it's still fresh in my mind and I didn't get a chance to use close assault I'm half tempted to 
play just a couple, one more turn. Like I uh, have the Russians assault here with their two squads of guards against these units. A wounded hero and a shaken squad. It's actually a half squad. Took casualties. And possibly down here, but I think the Germans with their MG42 are just going to cut anyone down that comes close to this position. It is a building surrounded by some heavy woods here, so I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, the Russians were just coming across the open ground here. Always a dangerous thing to do in a World War II or modern era game. Open ground is not your friend. Uh, the Russians did get into this building. <laughs> yeah, it's just a shame that the Russian initiative was just so bad. They could not win it. Anyway, folks, that's what's going on. I'm having a good time. And I think I'm going to break out SPQR and get some ancient battles on the table. Something I really love. Just pull it out real quick. This is actually the scenario, I think. Let me see. Uh, I think it is. Tiffernum, the Battle of Tiffernum. Yeah, there's the deployment. As you can see. Yeah, pretty nice. Samnite Wars are pretty interesting. A lot of history in this this game system, the Great Battles of History series. And there's the order of battles. I'll have to give the rules another read through. I think this is what I want to do. I could change my mind. Depends. But I gotta change it up, I think. One of the reasons I like to change it up is because I spend so long playing one particular game. I take my time with it. Like, how many days did it take me to play this? Three? Three days? Yeah, I don't think I could keep on pushing it. It's not a good thing. So I like to change it up anyway. So another game I'm thinking about playing is Great Battles of the American Revolution, moving on to either Saratoga or uh, is it Germantown I also have? Utah Springs. I don't think it's Germantown. I don't think I have that one. Uh, I got the Tri-Pack from GMT. It's got like three battles plus a bonus, which is Utah Springs. Don't remember all the battles. Brandywine, Saratoga, Utah Springs was the bonus. And there's a third one I was thinking about playing. It's not Germantown. Damn, I can't think of it. I wish I had Monmouth. That was a separate uh, boxed game for the series. I don't have that volume. I wish I had that. Great battle. And, yeah, this is what I'm thinking of playing. And this is in the Barbarian supplement. La Roulette. La Roulette, that's the one I played. Very fun. Sentinum. Sentinum. Telamon. Cremona. I'm sure my pronunciations are all over the place. But that's the way it goes. All right, folks. That's what I'm thinking of doing. Tell me what you think, if you like. Uh, well, tell me what you think about Lock and Load. If you play that, or if you play ASL, the starter kits... I know I haven't really detailed this too much, but I kind of give you an idea of what it's like. I think the graphics on this is fantastic. I do give it that. One thing I don't like is the way the counters are uh, cut. Instead of the, the counters being cut on the corners, which is easy enough to clip, and it's usually what I do, they're uh, actually on the top and bottom of the counters. You can see it. And I don't like that because you can't clip that, obviously. I think the best you can do is file it a little bit. Take a little blade to it, but that's a risky business. So I don't like that because you can't get rid of that, really. You'd have to file every counter. Unless, some, unless you guys have an idea of how to fix that, I don't know what it is. I usually clip my counters because it's an easy thing to do when it's on the corners. But anyway... That's the MG42 when it's on a bipod mount. Much more maneuverable. And I guess its firepower would be less. What it should be. It's two and three. Yeah, it is. Only got a firepower of two. Well, that's appropriate. And they can't move, I believe, when they're like this. Range 14, range 10. So that's pretty cool that it takes that into account. I like that. And 
and yeah so that's the situation he wasn't there was he not that it matters now all right folks i had a good time playing this i hope you enjoyed and i hope after i play maybe one more game i'm gonna do a video replay of this game because i did enjoy this quite a bit i've still got a lot to go i haven't read any of the rules on uh, aircraft or vehicles uh, or any of the ordnance uh, firing, like, you know, pack 40s bazookas and mortars, and I haven't read any of that stuff. So I'm still pretty new to this. So I think one more game with some of the additional elements added, like ordnance, uh, another game like that, I'll probably post it to my vlog, and sometime after that, I'll do a full-blown scenario with all the ordnance and support weapons and, and infantry, maybe vehicles, and I'll, uh, I'll record that as a play-by-play. -play. We'll see. I like to really have a grasp of the rules when I sit down and do a replay, uh, like I did with Brandywine, for instance, or my the ASL scenario I did, uh, War of the Rats. You know, pretty good grasp of what's going on. don't want to be making a lot of mistakes, and i got to go make corrections or... God help me, some come, someone joins the, comes on the video and leaves me comments, oh, you did that horribly wrong, blah, 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 blah. Such a pain. But anyway, folks, there it is. Hope you enjoyed. All right, that's this episode. Stay tuned. I'll get into the next uh, game, which will be SPQR. Give you my thoughts on that and what's going on. Maybe show you a little bit of the gameplay. Who knows? I might even do a full replay. So we'll see. Let me, let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, folks, you guys hang in there. It's only going to get better. Take care.